Hey, we're live. Pick rep, 7 p.m. Eastern. Every night until this virus is over with, gone, kaput. Um, and hopefully, <laughs> who knows how long this show is going to go on. It might go on for, you know, a few weeks or uh, a bit. So hopefully you enjoy, hopefully you enjoy the, the chatter and everything. My awesome co-host, Amelia, right now is doing kid things. She's not sick. She's just playing, which is great. I don't want her to be on a show every night because I don't want her to feel like it's like, uh, mandatory, but she loves doing it. Uh, she might pop in later on, ask some questions. Uh, tonight, I want to give a big shout out to OSD. I perform, serve, and develop. Go to weareosd.org. It's a veteran service organization that I am involved with. It's a nonprofit. And right now they are critical because what they do is they bring veteran community together through um, uh, like an ecosystem of video, of xbox of computer everything bringing veterans together so we could chat um have a community a virtual community and they do a whole bunch of other stuff a ton of outreach big shout out to them um without further ado i'd like to bring on benjamin Strait, dr benjamin Strait. he's got a great background he's now the director director of online education at national american university uh, we've collaborated on a bunch of different podcasts and tonight he's told me this is the first one that he's actually been invited to. So I, I find that kind of uh, incredible because he's a he's got an excellent resume and a great background. And he's going to hopefully dispel some of these myths and rumors or any other questions you might have about um, online education, online learning. So without further ado, let me bring him in. There he is. What's going on, brother? What's up, man? Thanks for having me on here. Yeah, this is nice. Look at you all dressed up with a tie. I'm like, I don't plan on wearing one of those things for a while. Uh, yeah, you know, it's, I mean, I've been doing the online thing so long, even as an attorney, that yeah. I decided years ago to have a professional background and I'm in my shirt and tie daily at my office. And so my students or people I work with can just pop in and it's like knocking on the door and they can just come right yeah. in and we can talk. So, yeah. Hey, let's talk about your background. Let's give us the, um, the elevator pitch on who you are and where you came from. Oh, okay. To begin, I'm a father first. That's what really matters to me. My sons are 13 and 15. They're in my entire life. Uh, I'm not quite sure where to start. People say that. Um, I have an undergraduate, a master's, a law degree, and a PhD. And I've taught for around 13 years online and in person, but about 11 years online. <clears throat> and I'm a disabled army veteran having proudly served. I was discharged as a disabled uh, veteran honorably in 2005. And I I'm not quite sure what else to say other than I do yoga every day and I like crafting and doing art. And my students are first when I'm in my roles. So that's awesome, man. And you are heavily tattooed as am I. So I like that. Right? Yeah. <laughs> you can be yeah. as educated as you want in this world and you could have tattoos. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah. And you are, uh, you and I chat all the time, man. We talk yeah. about like trafficking and we talk about this. We talk about that. Um, a lot of my education was online. Um, mm -hmm. I've been teaching online for a few years now through a couple community colleges. Mm -hmm. But now we are in a whole new world. And now we're talking about parents. And mm -hmm. parents are now thrust into this online curriculum, online schooling. It's a new world for a lot of people. And, you know, I kind of we know where we're at when it comes to higher education. But let's let's ping off of, OK, you're now a um, you're still getting you're getting used to you're a parent. You're getting used to an online uh, education. What's the best advice you would have? Embrace the future. See, what's interesting as far as my background goes is that I, I first started teaching as a teaching assistant at the University of South Florida when I was earning a master's degree in sociology on ground here in Tampa, Florida from 2001 to 2003. I commissioned as an officer in the Army in 2003 at ROTC during my graduate degree. But I, for the two years I, I taught, and there was pretty much no online. It was just correspondence courses, mailing or whatever. And then... After I was injured, 
I had a year off before I started law school in 2008. And so I taught in person at, uh, at uh, Fort Carson. I was stationed at Fort Carson when I got it. And at the time I was married. And so I taught in person at Fort Carson. It's an army base. And then at Peterson Air Force Base in Colorado. And then also Shriver Air Force Base in Colorado. And everything was still pretty much in person. And then I graduated law school early in 2008, uh, passed the bar. And I, I, I didn't just want to go into being an attorney. I, I still wanted to teach. So I taught in person on the ground here for a few of the 13 colleges here in Tampa. But I started teaching online. And even back then in 2009, it was a relatively new thing. And I got, I got joked. I had people say, is that really a job? Is that whatever? And it irritated me because my students were so great. Like they're working professionals, right? They have families, they have kids, they're bouncing this stuff out and they're producing these amazing assignments and discussions at 10 and 11 o'clock at night after they've already had a 12 hour day. And so I stuck with it because I believed in the students. And then all of a sudden over the past five years, my online work or my position became more, I'd say respected because more people were going online and then COVID hit. And then all of a sudden, wow, we're now online. So there's all these articles uh, for Zoom and how to you know, work from home and everything else. My best suggestions and advice for parents that have youngsters as early as they can be that are learning online all the way through getting your earning a, a, an undergraduate or graduate degree online is that embrace the future and learn how to navigate through these waters because it's incredibly engaging, incredibly interacting. Uh, there's evidence-based practices that show that online students learn just as much as on-ground students. And it's a, a formula and a framework that we've been wrestling with for a number of years and attempts to make it legitimate. And it just so happens in timing now that a lot of that has been ironed out. So when we've we've gone online, or there's been the we're going to go online because of COVID nineteen. It's not as if it was ten years ago when people thought it was a joke. It is now socially accepted that we have online colleges. We see commercials and everything else. So it, it's kind of a, it's just a transition from what you see and know is there to what you can do in your home with your children or yourself if you go online. No, that's some great points too. And one thing I would I would tell people is that the framework of these online and you said it's it's been out online education has been out for a long time. I mean, most of my masters and all of my doctor I did online because I couldn't find I couldn't go to school at night, not with a full time fifty hour week job. Yeah, just couldn't do it as an adult. But the um, and now it has teaching community college through online Blackboard platforms, and now my next school I'll be teaching Canvas. Uh, it's, it's very easy to navigate once you get used to it. Mm -hmm. And what I, what I would hope is that through all this, a lot of us, you, me, a lot of our associates, a lot of people who have actually gone and done online education is to help parents navigate, you know, navigate the first time they step into a blackboard community or canvas or any other online platform mm -hmm. and help. You know, we have Facebook, we have social connections now through the internet that this would be a great time to say, hey, you know what? Um, I'm maybe I'm a member of the PTA. I know you're going to feel overwhelmed about submitting um, educational requirements or just helping your kids learn. Maybe now's the time to kind of reach out and say, don't be overwhelmed. But and also say, now we're adapting. Now this is the future of education. A lot of it is going to be online. Yeah, and that's where the model is moving and it has for a number of years. Again, my best advice is just a point and click, right? You're not, it's not like lethal weapon where you're gonna click the wrong color wire and the bomb goes on. <laughs> just point and click, just be curious. And what's so interesting is that as parents, especially kids, my sons, everyone's kids, they just explore and run down all those rabbit holes online. And there seems to be a psychological disconnect in the studies that I've read when someone goes into an online classroom. It's like there's these barriers of well, can I click here? Can I click there? It could be the intimidation that it's it's college and it's online. There's still performance expectation or prestige expectation. But what I tell you is just click, 
like you're not you're not going to break anything like it, it's set up for you mm-hmm. to navigate and get around and if you have any questions email or call your online professor it's like those that work online know they're pretty much on call 24 hours a day and there's certain parameters reply within 24 hours during the week and 24 hours in the weekend but it's uh they will answer your questions to get you through so don't don't be fearful just grab it and if you're if you're a pta parent and your pta is not going online lead that initiative say look let's get online and they go how and you say well i don't know but i'll figure it out you just got to start somewhere for years now that i've been in online education and thankfully and i'm very humbled but now i'm the director of online education for national american university is that I started in 2009 teaching one section of critical thinking and problem solving at National American University. I got the job because I had a Juris Doctor and they had to have that for accreditation purposes. And from there I just worked and and I loved it and I I, I rose to have the position I have now. But what people need to remember is that nobody knows what we're doing in a sense. Like we are, we do know, but we don't. We're, We're crafting the future when this, if this, like with this. So we've been through numerous implementations of content and then it doesn't work and you revise, but we're all moving forward. So if you don't know what to do, point and click. If you want to organize your parent group for students, for your children or PTA, be the one to say, look, let's do it online. Where do we start? Well, I don't know. Let's just start with Facebook. You just you figure it out and you learn tools as you go along and you bring people together. And I've seen that happen numerous times over the years. And it's just a matter of being an explorer, right? It's almost, and this is a, a, a bad reference, right? But it, it's still the best one that I can think of. When people, when we were just a navigable by, by waterway society, right? When we were exploring the world, it goes back thousands of years. People would just hop in a boat and go, well, I hope it's that way. And they would just go, Christopher Columbus, the Vikings, the Conquistadors, whoever, they had no idea what they were doing, mm-hmm. but they had enough sense to know that this is where things are going. So I need to figure it out. And so be one of those virtual people because you are going to add to the community. That's what people don't understand. Like if you know nothing about being online, you're a PTA parent and you want to get things online and you start moving things forward, you see a synergy where other parents and other people pitch in and then you create this product and then you, you go from mm-hmm. there. So it, it's very much a, you know, a wild west mentality in the sense. Ask questions. And that's the the thing about it is you don't, you know, there was a stigma back in the day when I, um, I went to national university before I, before I went to Henley Putnam later on. And there was a stigma about getting online education. Um, cause I could work on it at night. I could work on it anywhere. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, if, you know, as long as you have an internet connection or even if you don't, you have a laptop, a notebook, anything, you could take notes, do anything. You could work on it anytime. And, That is one thing I want to talk about tonight is that Mm -hmm. your hours, unless your school is going to say, okay, you're going to go to, we're going to have a session between like 10 and 1 Mm PM and you have to log in, you have to be mobile. You have to have a connection where you can webcam. Um, That's different. Okay. And you still have to navigate, but that's when you're a student, you're going to be there. Your parents aren't going to be, maybe they'll be sitting over here in a corner, but a lot of the time uh, the education is going to be on you. Mm-hmm. Now, if you, it's it's going to be different for, um, and we're going to go into the um, we post secondary. Yeah, you're on your own. You could do this. You have the bandwidth. You know how to do it. But if we're talking uh, K through 12, and you're going to have some sort of online community that's going to have an education uh, that you have to learn, that is going to you're going to have to have parent interaction. And what I would say is, and I'm sure you would say the same thing is make sure you're involved. Make sure you understand the platform that your kids are. So if they need help um, or you need help, you could help each other. This is the time where, you know, you're going to have to just sit and do it. Well, here's the key as a parent. And my, my, I've seen, I've talked to various colleagues and gotten a few phone calls and emails about this as a parent. Okay. So for example, right. I never took chemistry. I avoided that like the plague through undergraduate, (laughs) graduate and everything else. Like, I, it's just the way it worked out with switching high schools and different state accreditations. You know, my oldest, he takes, he's in chemistry right now. I don't have to know chemistry. And in so many ways, I don't necessarily have to know 
the online platform as well as they do. Because the way 15, 13, seven year olds are, you just give it to them and five minutes later they figure it out because they, they, they're, they just, they're naturally curious. Uh, as a parent, you just, I would recommend that you just stay involved in their studies. What are you studying today? What did you learn? More importantly, what can you teach me? What did you learn today that you didn't know that you can tell me that would be interesting to me? And it's more or less a, ma a matter of managing tasks and getting things done. What I'm reading is that because so many public schools went online so fast and nobody saw this coming, so they didn't have uh, backup mirror programs, is that the administrations in the various states are figuring out ways to push content online even if they were hybrid before. So there's only three or four hours of actual work a day. So the question is, as a parent, how do you get your kids to do that work and understand that it's important, but then how do you get them to do that, but then realize they have all this extra time because they're not in school? Well, I would get them excited by incentivizing them, as in if you get the work done and you can show me that you submitted it and you follow the standards, then you get extra time to do whatever. The beauty of online education and what we should find a way to translate to, to, to minors, it's what parents do. I can't even tell you how many hundreds of students I had that are single moms, two and three kids, working one or two jobs, and they, they, they do their daily life and they come in at night and they put their nose to the grindstone for an hour or two. But what's interesting is what they tell me is that they know it's very much compartmentalized to that one or two hours and they get to work at their own pace. So they know that they can regulate life over here, but then do this for them. With children, the push should be, as we know, go to school and get this done. Show me that. And that's where the parents actually have to you know, understand the navigation is that if, if, you're, if your child submits an assignment, you have to be able to look at the submission page to see they actually submitted it. Mm -hmm. and if you see those check marks. It's like, okay, you did school. Great. Now what are we doing? Now let's use the rest of that time for something else. Right. And I, I've seen a lot of parents telling me that they use that almost as a homeschool model to where they get the, the online work done. And then they use the rest of the time to explore activities that are important to them, whether it's church, whether it's a, uh, uh, you know, exercise or whatever, but it's freed up a lot of time. It's just a matter of focusing the efforts and compartmentalizing them to where, well, you know, from the army, you're a crunchy, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You, you train to task and not to time. People yeah. are, used to, the kids are used to being in school for nine hours a day if they're picking their nose or working, but now that they're home, train them to task and use that other time for things that matter to you and your family and your culture. Plus up on that. Yeah, I agree completely. And um, that's the thing is f make sure you have the time for both kids right now. I mean, as parents, we could talk about this all day long. They're probably stressing. They're probably like, hey, man, what's going on with my future? This is unprecedented, et cetera. Um, so yeah, f make sure you're, you're getting all your curriculum in, but it's, this isn't, this is different. Online education is different than, okay, I'm going to be sitting in a seat from eight, to three and I'm done. Now it's like you, you pick your time, you find activities because just sitting behind a computer for all day, it's not fun. Mm -hmm. um, and it's not supposed to be fun, obvious education or whatever, but it's still your, you know, the average adult has 15, 20 minute span of uh, attention. What does a kid have? Uh, we have a really good question. What about the guardians or grandparents who are not interweb savvy? now having to assist the children. And this is one thing I'm going to start off with this one, Ben. And one thing I would say is this is where those uh, discussion boards come in. This is where you can have an area where parents and guardians and grandparents and everybody, the caretakers can go to and ask questions. Okay. Let's say you're using a, a system they call Blackboard. Blackboard's a common system. A lot of a lot of educational institutions use it. And Blackboard is basically it's an online. Uh, that's your educational platform. Mm -hmm. It's you. It's hard to navigate if you don't know what it's about. But once you get in there and you start clicking around, like Ben said, click, click, click until you're not going to hurt anything. You're not going to break anything. Um, until you learn how to get in there and start navigating on your own. This is a good place for the educational institutions, 
the other parents, the other kids that are tech savvy need to step up and help out the caretakers. What do you think, Ben? Yeah, it's so much of this, just like anything else with minors these days. So, for example, my oldest told me when he was in fifth grade and they had they, they had iPads issued to them in school. And this is a very extreme example, but I think it's one that a lot of parents don't want to face, but it's true. He's at lunch and he walks around a table and he sees, of course, the kids have already figured out a way to jailbreak whatever permissions were put on the iPad. And there's a group of about 10 kids watching porn on an iPad. Uh, okay. That's disturbing. I got it. But that's happening all over the country. Yep. In the sense that the kids are finding ways to get around parental rules and they don't have the, the left and right boundaries that we do. They just explore and click. So as a parent, you have to realize that these things are there and whether you want to address them with your children or not, that's up to you. But the old school model, when I, when we, I'm 40, when I grew up was right. Like you, this is all relevant. Let's see. <laughs> as a teenager, <laughs> as a teenage boy, you have a group of three or four friends. Some, someone in the group has found a playboy magazine, whatever it is, uncle gave it to them, you know, going through dad's stash and they would go off and look at it. And that was, like what their exposure was to those things. It was kind of understood that was going to happen and they would figure out about those issues as they got older and progressed. But what's happened now is that those very extreme pornographic issues and practices are available to any kid who can type online or even come across it by accident. So is what I'm saying by this is that your children are way smarter with tech then you would actually understand. They use tech to get around parents, you know? Like, oh, you're grounded, you can't use your phone. Well, they get on Instagram and they call each other through there and there's no trace of it, you know what I mean? So as a parent or guardian, I would, I assume you have a good relationship or an open relationship with the child and ask them to teach you what they're doing because they're they're online and from what i understand a lot of uh, teens and children are excited about this because to them it's all new like you know when you're nine years old it's fun to sleep on the floor with a cold pillow when you're 20 it's not so <laughs> right yeah so exactly ask, so ask them be like show me what you're doing teach me what you're doing you don't have to necessarily understand all those steps but you're stepping into their world and showing that you care about what their involvement is in this new modality for a two or three hour period a day. If you do that, studies will show that they will be more honest with you. So you don't have to know the nitty gritty. You just have to demonstrate that you care and you do, and you're monitoring them and ask them to report to you. And at least if nothing else, know mm -hmm. uh, where, where the assignment submission page is. So you can see they actually submitted some work. It, it's ridiculous to think that anyone really would learn all the tips and tricks and ins and outs. And even if you know that they're going to find a way to get around you because they are 13, 14, 15 year old mm -hmm. young people who from the beginning of time are trying to find a way to get around parental authority. Well, so, the other thing too, is like the bait, but you know, take edu take technology out of the variable. Mm -hmm. um, the basic educational pillars are still there. Yeah. Math, social studies, um, science, everything is still there. Now is just learning where are they input again? And oh, by the way, um, I just find out my, my nine and 11 year old have, they do this at school already. They're already using computers. Now is the time for us to kind of help them get to that next level, help them focus. Mm -hmm. And, you know, like you said, there are kids that are just going to try to get around it, but you're going to find a lot of kids right now are getting, especially stuck at home. <laughs> They might look forward to having some sort of interaction, even if it's a virtual interaction. So that's kind of what I'm I'm hoping comes out of this. That now, once because we're go, we're supposed to start our educa online education here in the next couple of weeks in Virginia, mm -hmm. and I'm hoping that gets the kids back in interacting with other people. And that is one thing we could we could parlay into is there's a it's the online community for education is a lot different than you'd expect. Mm -hmm. You would think people just go in and do their do their education and then boom, they're out. But when you set up discussion boards and I would implore all educators to have some sort of area where the kids can meet 
virtually where there are discussion boards where they can interact um, and that that's inside the school parameter not just you know TikTok or instagram or whatever because then there might they might have some solid questions that an adult might be able to answer and and in online education we have a lot of what they call discussion boards and this is one area where you can have a thread where you can ask a question you could bring something up and other people within your class or who have access to that discussion board can also hop in and answer it. So um, the truth, you asked that question about the guardians, grandparents, that is one thing. Remember discussion boards really are journals or somewhere that's open access to the other members of that online community that you're working with. Yeah. Uh, two things I want to bring up first is that what's not come out or what's not been discussed to the best of my knowledge, and it could just be the news that I'm reading is no one is asking kids, what their worries, fears, and their adaptations are to going online, which is kind of odd because we've been in the kid worship culture for like 15, 20 years. Uh -huh. so you think the first thing would be, is this too loud in the car? Should I turn it down for you? Right? Like what time do you want to go to bed, Johnny? We give the kids like this, uh, this, this hero status. What I'm understanding is there's two things. Number one, they have to adjust to being online. And number two, parental oversight. And those of us in the older generation tend to be very stodgy in the sense that this is the way that we did things, right? We're in a new reality. So the way, the way for your child to be successful is for them to understand that you are attempting to understand the world that they're in. Even if you fail miserably, being, you know, being a parent is 90% showing up, just show up, right? Just you have legitimate interest. Don't be afraid to to go for it. And I think it's that that basic understanding that it's not my superimposed beliefs. And if you don't get this done, you're grounded. You may take that approach, but it's a different world for them. I mean, can you imagine as a teenager being thrust online and then having to navigate your parents and what the expectations online are? You would want a soft pillow to talk to and help you navigate through those things. So you can still be a parent and you can still administer and discipline, but you can also understand it's a dual role. Now, as far as the discussion boards, I'm telling you, I've, there's a, a school I've taught for, for 10 years now, and I have been stuck in associate classes. And I'm saying stuck in the sense that I have this massive pedigree where I, I've taught law, PhD, whatever classes, and I should be at a higher level. I stay there because that's on the ground, right? And that's on the ground in the sense that discussion boards teach me so much. That's my favorite thing. I taught critical thinking and problem solving for National American University for 109 sections for over 2,000 students. Wow. Yeah. I wrote, I wrote the class textbook and revised it twice. But even to the very last day I taught that class before I assumed the new roles, the discussion boards were still interesting to me because what happens online is that because there's there's a, a modicum of being anomalous, which is what gives rise to trolls. At the mm -hmm. same time, that allows students to really express their feelings in an appropriate way. And so you start seeing diverse thoughts and concepts and interpretations that I never saw in person because there's the anonymous part of being online and being able to express those safely and not be judged in person. So as far as you talking about discussion boards, if you want to know what's going on with your child's class, get in discussion and see what they're posting. And the same way psychologists, right? Like for, uh, you know, those that are of tender age, which is 11 and, and younger by legal status, psycho child psychologists, they want to see what the kid's drawing in our class, right? That's what they interpret. So many movies are based on that. See what your kid's posting in discussion board. You can get a very good litmus test on what's going on based upon what they're doing. No, absolutely. I, I love discussion boards because, ah. and you're going to find a lot of introverts and extroverts are out there. Um, they're, they're like speaking their mind and they're saying, yeah. Hey, you know what? I don't believe, I don't agree with you there. And it doesn't turn into a massive argument. You're seeing two people talking over it and figuring it out. And at the end, it might, they might not agree with each other, but at least they get the different perspective. And you do have a lot of, some discussion boards can be anonymous. Some, you could have your name in them. 
Um, but I would ask, keep your name on there. Make sure your kids keep their name on there because then you're going to see, especially when it comes to like educational stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's going to be it's going to be an interesting time. Uh, ben, uh, hold on a second. Let me just uh, let me ask everybody out there. If you have any questions, feel free to just ping into the comment section and we'll see them. But yeah, Ben, this is uh, interesting times, brother. Yeah, it is. And back to discussion boards, what it's and I've taught. I don't like going to the number I do, but I don't because I don't believe it necessarily, but I can evidence it. Like I've taught 89 different classes across six different disciplines and I've taught 375 different courses online. Right. So I have a wide berth of that. And there's a reason you're like, well, how'd that happen? Well, I'm disabled. I, I can't, there's lots of things that go into it to where mm -hmm. I'm stuck in front of a computer all day. I'm not saying I'm sad. I'm saying I've had a lot of experience because of the lifestyle that I, I've chosen and that I, I've had to work with as I've moved forward. But discussion boards are so interesting because the student's name is on there. And when they're part of it and they're charged with that role, they observe netiquette. Netiquette is the appropriate methodology of communicating with people, disagreeing with ideas, providing counter arguments, right? I think mm -hmm. I've had really two problems in all of my years because students, like they're paying to be in school or even if they're teens and they're online, they know their name is attached to it and they rise to the occasion and have legitimate social discourse. And I think the yeah. big advantage of being online is that you learn how to do that in that modality. Now you may get on Twitter and troll people and be yeah. hashtag whatever, but at least you know the correct way to communicate with people in a virtual world. You may choose to discard that, but you've been put in a position to where you've done that. And I think that's a very important life skill going forward. Absolutely. You know, and this is your, and this is where we're going to have to, we're half, we have to adapt. Mm -hmm. There is no more ifs, ands, or buts about it. This mm -hmm. is how your kid, this is how you, or this is how like 99% of the world right now. If you want to learn something, it's got to be virtual. Mm -hmm. You're not going to get around it. And now there's a time when you're seeing, um, Everybody that has, like you said, like you and me and everybody else has an online educational background of teaching it, um, getting a word out there that this is where we're going to have to adapt to and help do it. I think one of the best things about it, you know, Andrew Yang, he was a, a Democratic presidential candidate, right? One of his main concepts for universal basic income was that, and this is a, an overall general theory. Oh, politics. You're not talking politics. No, no, no. This is not politics. This is <laughs> I'm a, just kidding. This is a matter of function. Yeah. His concept, which is, it's not novel, but it's been mirrored by others that have uh, provided, you know, promoted UBI, was that if someone is income secure, they are free to explore those things that they want to explore, whether it's art, mm -hmm. science, or whatever, because they're income secure, right? The thing about online education is that when I went to my undergraduate in 1997, there were no online options. And I wanted to go immediately in the military, but I couldn't. Well, I mean, I, I could have, but I had a scholarship. So I told my parents, okay, I'll try it out for a year. Then I'll drop out if I want. Mm -hmm. to. But there were no options. What my sons and their friends and what I'm reading are looking at is they, they don't want to be stuck in it. Like they just done high school. You don't want to go and sit in class and do the, you know, the on ground college thing. There's other benefits. You're free, whatever. But every most people that i know they want to go work and do something and then do education at their leisure in the same sense that if education is at one's leisure and one is income secure then you're free to do other things uh -huh. now it's not the same but in a sense it is because it frees the potential student up from being in an on-ground campus uh so they're online so they can use that extra time to get a job, get a skill and go do other things. And so that's the advantage of it. And that's where we're going. Yeah. We are, we're there. <laughs> we're there. This is, this is our future for uh, months at least until we quarantine all these educational institutions and we get people back on, on track. Do you want to know where it's going? No, I know where we are. Where, where's it going? You know, you know something I don't. Oh yeah, I've so many like think tank groups as far as immersive technology to create an online educational experience and whatever. And some schools in the world are doing this, but what's stopping this delivery 
is a matter of technology in the same sense that, right? Like I remember TVs were huge, 300 pounds 20 years ago, and they were on the floor. Mm -hmm. Now they're cheap as anything at Walmart. And you, you, you know, you can use 3M tape and put them on the wall. Well, what some schools have done and the technology is moving down to be affordable is that like there's a school in Australia and they have 3D, right? Complete immersion for a nursing program. And they use technology to work through uh, like they put the goggles on and they see the human being there for their physiology class and they can interact as if they're like the terminator and they have those the optics and the scopes moving around right and then there's other companies uh, one i saw they were developing um interactive apps for, so for i don't know how to quite say it for you uh, for example you put this technology on you're looking at your car engine right it's like google glasses and you want to do an oil change and it walks you through and identifies what you have to do to do that oil change. It, it, it's a tutorial that walks you through while you're actually doing it in a real world experience. How about that? Right. There are virtual field trips where students all put on the 3D goggles and their teacher guides them through, you name it, the Giza pyramids. Like this stuff is coming up and it's moving forward to where it's not just going to be static, it's synchronous. I look at the discussion, I read it, and I provide a reply, but to an immersive model where you use this technology to visit places in the world and have these experiences and learn things from experts where you can interact. Wow, I didn't I didn't even think about the the whole virtual world too. I mean, now we're, we're now we're into a whole new realm of education. Yeah. And learning. It's it's good stuff, man. We have a professor at NAU and she has a PhD in geology, which is rocks, right? I don't get rocks, but she she has this grant which she's worked for years now. And she goes up to Antarctica and she's worked with a few companies and created this 3D immersive learning platform where students can put this on and go with her to Antarctica to explore whatever uh, huh. you know, rock issues there is and they can interact and talk with it. So they're actually on the ground and learning these things as if they're there and I've seen the app and it's incredibly genius and it's, it's something that's not out there. It's in development. It's really expensive, but it's going to price point down to the average person as technology develops. So that's where this is going. Yeah. It's really cool. Now you got me thinking about like all different things when we're getting to the secondary education about like law enforcement classes, crime scene investigation and everything you could do with, with 3d and virtual reality and everything now and it's not expensive like you know i remember back in the day it was like if you even mention virtual reality or anything it was like you're thinking hundreds of thousands and maybe even millions so yeah. it's good times man it's a good time to be um getting well I should, it's a good time for it online but it's a good time to get your foot really get a foothold into this online community it's you, you said forensics. I have to because I taught forensics for years on the ground. I, I taught at a, a career college here in Tampa, had a budget, had two splatter rooms, had a full lab, um, taught a 24 week course in crime scene investigation and forensic analysis. And I'm working with a company right now. You know, like the CSI video games came out for Xbox some years ago mm -hmm. and you would just go and it's it, like you would look at some generic scene, like where's the clue that would stick out. And it was really odd. It, it was it was really lame but you still felt as if you were processing the crime scene, right? It's emerged now I'm working with models where you, it, it, it's almost as if you were literally there and you have to think and move things around and figure out what to do. And it's completely immersive for forensics. So this, it, again, it's moving faster than the average person who goes online has the technology. Cause you can't ask someone who has, just a computer like mine or yours to go get you know, 3D goggles and download this software for thousands of dollars. But it's going to get to a point to where that's just part of the curriculum. And it's embrace the change. Be, be a stakeholder. Be a change maker. If you have ideas about anything that I've said, mm -hmm. it's contact me. I mean, I this is an ongoing and developing world that we're yes. doing. And I say harness it and communicate and be a hive mind. We're not alone in this. Yeah. 
get the foothold, step forward, and get into it. Yeah. Well, brother, we've reached uh, we've reached our end of the show. Time for me to eat some dinner and hang out with the fam. Because I don't do that enough. <laughs> Even though you're on self-quarantine and you put your days up by day <laughs> on Facebook. <laughs> I know. I'm like, yeah. what am I doing today? Uh, ben, what are you doing tonight, man? You want to come on a show? <laughs> yeah. That's what I do, man. Hey, um, anything else for the audience? Um, if there's a way that you could post my email in some way, shape, or form, if you have listened to this, you have any ideas, the only stupid question or comment is the one that you don't give. Okay. You have any, I'll idea, put it out right now. Anything that what I is said, it? Uh, just do Ben straight at gmail.com. My personal email address. Give me an idea. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's nothing too far out there. And I, we should think together and I, more than anything, we should stop considering ourselves as individuals trying to go forward because it's very obvious that we are connected in a hive mind and embracing that connectivity and moving forward is how we're going to move forward and be part of that community because i'm proud to be part of it yeah and you know everybody has my contact information too i've taught online for a long time mm -hmm. ben is a subject matter expert and he's the director of online education now He's a, a, a really big commodity in the online educational world. Please reach out to him. And if you can't get a hold of him, um, which I doubt because he's really, uh, he's, he responds quickly. Um, follow nau.edu on uh, Facebook, um, Henley Putnam, uh, School Strategic Studies on Twitter and everywhere else. Um, I'm an alumni, uh, not of National American University, but of Henley. Uh, but yeah, follow Ben, follow the school. Um, if you have questions about online education, please post them. I mean, we have time and we will answer them, especially email Ben because he's got the real expertise. Um, ben, hang on a line, brother. I'm going to give my quick shout out. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'm going to give a shout out to Michael Connolly tonight. Why not? I got my everybody counts or nobody counts. Um, t-shirt on tonight and one thing about that is in this time day and age everybody counts um it, it doesn't matter who you are or what um unless you're an evil sob uh we all count and watch out for your neighbors watch out for your family watch out for your friends if you have if you have the means the opportunity um text them call them uh check in with them daily uh, see where they're at. I like to bring up the mental health aspect, but that is a very big key to this. A lot of us aren't used to isolation, um, so please reach out. Everybody, thanks a lot for tuning in. I plan to stream this live every night, more or less around 7 p.m. Eastern time. Uh, some nights I may have to adjust based on my guest schedule, so please just bear with me. Uh, great guests coming in this week. Um, I believe, yeah, I'll put out a guest list sometime soon. But thanks a lot. Uh, tune in, pass the word, subscribe, like, whatever. Thank you, everybody.